what is going on guys it's your boy Sezo here bring us a video here today bring you guys a photoshop to write a creature own esports banner design whatever the title is and between that is like the whole theme of it but right now as you guys can see it's a pretty freaking dope and awesome awesome super awesome design i don't know i'm incredibly happy with the outcome of this one for me it was more or less the fact that i sort of tried to get away from using like overlay try to use colors try to like mash things together make it look very just just right right you know what i mean like i'm trying to figure out how to make sure i continuously improve myself in blending stocks and not just always using overlay and sort of getting the the easy way out or really not the like the the thinking way out you know what i mean so i came up with this really cool dope idea and i think it looks really freaking dope um the only things that are being used in this uh video here today <laughs> excuse me would be what is this thing called what are, i'll put it in the uh, description down below it's called like a grunge splatter banner that's what this thing is called. You probably can't see it because it's above everything or below everything. It's this thing right here. I use this for this over here. And then I use uh, brush stock for my brush pack, uh, which is this one right here for this circle thing you see on the outsides here. Um, and then this splatter as well is also from the same exact picture. And then pretty much the pattern overlay to use in the insides here, which just gives this really dope sort of almost like a depth in a way or a really cool. Just It just looks really good without this sort of um weird sort of pattern going in out of nowhere and then like breaking the whole structure of the actual design i don't know what it is but i thought i think it just looks really cool i think i did it myself i think it looks really dope i'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do this thing today so of course two likes on the video equals a secret down below and most likely the psd of the video here you see today so of course as always guys don't forget to like like the video comment down anything you want to see me do in the future and all that cool stuff and let's go ahead and get this thing going right now all right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing going. Now, immediately, you're going to ask yourself, this is like an esports-related stuff. Where do I get these pictures from? Where did you get yours from? I know for sure you're going to ask. So I got mine's from the Twitter at ChrisBet, but then it's like B3T. But his name is Chris Bet. Pretty cool name, by the way. And he's a really dope uh, action photographer and stuff like that. I wanted to uh, address to him, like, hey, I want to use your pictures in the video. He was full just full on board and just very very helpful gave me the raw files and all that cool stuff so if you guys want to check it out his Twitter's in the description as well as his uh portfolio where you can go ahead and ask him or you know strip some pictures from there and just make sure you guys credit the, the photographer always credit the photographer for doing some sort of esports banner because it's all about them going to the event themselves purchasing it themselves unless they're in like an organization and really you know taking these pictures and moving forth themselves as a you know photographer so i want to make sure i gave him the full credit for the pictures and stuff like that and i really appreciate him very much you guys should go check him out so let's go ahead and do this so i'm going to grab the pictures from here i'm going to grab the first one i believe it's this one that i'm going to be using i don't know i'll see yes it is this one okay so we'll grab that in a second okay so the black background i'm using it does not matter what background you are using by the way i'm in a twitter header dimension as 13 or excuse me 3000 by 1500 pixels the twitter header dimension and i'm gonna go ahead and drag this picture in now now since he gave me the raw file i was fortunate enough to actually i can mess around with the exposure and stuff myself um i'm just gonna make it just good enough that it doesn't you know we're just gonna make it just just good enough you know what i mean there we go just good enough perfect now so when i go ahead and throw this picture in we're gonna make this a little bit bigger and the cool thing about having a raw file, just in case you guys are not, you know, you don't know, um, basically what happens is you can actually double click on this again. I don't know how the hell I just whistled. What the fuck? <laughs> you can just, uh, <laughs> what the hell was that? I want to learn how to do that again. Okay, anyway, so you can double click on it again and open up a raw file. That's pretty cool if you guys did not know that, just in case, you know, in the future, if you ever mess up or anything like that, or use a picture from him and he sends it to you or not, or you email him, whatever. You know what I mean? Okay, so the first thing first is the uh of course the gradient you wanted to learn how to use so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to our adjustments here we're gonna go to gradient map now i already have this saved here let, let me show you guys what the whole gradient was all about it's using a green on one side which is a nice little green i kind of try to match the optic green color of course you want to make sure you kind of match as much as possible and then i gave myself a corresponding color that did not what, what, that was not black let me, let me show you guys in the exact way let me make sure i select this one and i reverse it that way you can actually see what it's supposed to look like now, at first, if you look, use a green and you're like, you put a black, that's just basic green gradient map. The whole thing about in like enhancing a gradient map and really understanding it, uh, understanding it, excuse me, is using a darker sort of, not opposite color, but something that's a corresponding color exactly, actually. So like a, a darker corresponding color. So for me, it was blue. If you can go around, you can see this like so uh, odd, like greenish, yellowish tint. But basically, you can't just use two of the same bright colors. That's not how it's going to work. You want to use one primary color as the, as the one you wish to actually uh, see as, you know, the main color scheme, right? Uh, if it's red, it's red. If it's green, it's green. If it's blue, it's blue. That's going to be that first one. But the second one here that we're using right now, you want to see a darker color, but have it be a color that really corresponds to what you're actually using in the beginning. So if you're using a red, we use a corresponding orange. If you're using a, 
a green use a corresponding I don't really know maybe like a purplish it might look weird but you I don't know I'm just trying to think in my head how it look but you guys understand what I'm talking about right so once you basically have that you're good to just sort of add a little bit of a color curve right add a simple little s curve as always you need one of those simple little s curves there we go so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna pretty much uh make a new layer we're gonna take a brush here a nice soft brush which means zero hardness a pretty good fair size we're gonna hold alt on our computer that way we can select the green that's already like sort of here or whatever color you're using your uh, basically select your primary color and then once you've done that you want to go ahead and click on the actual foreground color again and then just move it up to the top left wherever it is wherever you click that it should be somewhere over here with a you know a nice little color but just move it a little forward and excuse me a little to the top left there we go i don't know i don't know how, how else to explain it. But move it towards the top left a little bit so i can get that little whitish you know hue in there as well so that way when i click around a couple times like this and i put this blend mode from normal to linear dodge add it'll give myself a really nice cooler sort of like bolded theme like i don't know how to say it. like just really nice little color it just feels right it just feels good the lighting just feels right right so i'm gonna go ahead and just now finalize this little little portion of this with a bright uh brightness and contrast so right now i'm gonna put my brightness contrast just like so and i think around hmm, let's just put it at 10 brightness and then 35 contrast to keep it nice and uh nice and simple with the fives all right so once you have this pretty much done you're good to say to yourself okay let's go ahead and move on to the main sort of other portion of this which is that little uh thing that's going across right here right so let's go and do that now let's actually also make sure we have our picture here matching the other one i think it's a little further up like so right okay so now where's this little thingy majigger at it's right over grunge splat i think what i looked up by the way was uh, grunge paint paint splatter or something like that Something of that, what I looked up on Google, I found this stock that it was actually, fortunately, using graphic stock, not not even like, not even sponsored video, it's just like, oh, I have graphic stock account, and then of course I logged into it, and I downloaded it. So, here we go, let's just go ahead now and make this fairly big, I'll say something around there is pretty good. Now, I'm going to show you guys how I actually subtracted the black from the white without using just the regular old, you know, magic wand tool. As you see, if I click over here, it kind of doesn't select everything over here as well, and I won't select everything inside. So, a little quick tip you guys did not know already. If you were to select on your layer itself, go to select, and then go to color range. If you guys don't know about color range, it basically selects one color, picks that colors out, or picks, picks that color out, excuse me, and then completely subtracts uh, not subtracts it, well, we're going to subtract it, but it completely selects the entire color, that shade of color, and you can delete it right away. So something like a black and white photo is perfect. So if I were to click the white, because that's what I want to delete, and press OK, simply enough, you'll see that every nook and cranny, besides a couple of these little spots here that are more grayish tone, every nook and cranny otherwise is basically going to be selected. And what I could do now is I can just go ahead and rash the layer really quick. And press delete my keyboard just like so if i press delete my keyboard as you can see all the white goes away all that good stuff happens and now we can pretty much now select it just like so we're going to select this splatter on the left hand side select it which means like sort of pen tool all the way around it right click make selection press ok and then on that selected layer press m on your keyboard to bring up the rectangle marquee tool that way you can have the option when you right click to layer via cut and that is very very simple very very dope and as you can see everything else is still there how we're going to do now is we're gonna make sure that not everything else is selected. So let's just now select it with a box and then layer via cut. That way if I press control T, now it's just that. Perfect, so very simple. And all this other stuff, extra stuff that's on the outsides, just delete that. And then this little one over here, we're gonna keep this as well. Um, Let me see though, I'm gonna go ahead actually, and I don't know why this is there, that's pretty awkward. Um, I guess we'll just leave that for now, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do now as well is select this one out. And then layer via cut so everything on the outsides here i can just press delete on because i'm going to use these two things actually so what i'm going to go ahead and do now is i'm just going to go ahead and just double click on this and you see these other little white spots here these little you can see like the little outside coating of this little bit of white a very simple way of doing that with something like this kind of stock where it's just black you can just basically put a color uh overlay on it with a black color overlay and it'll completely look like it's supposed to be like that right so as you can see this little part over here though is still there so i'm just press delete over there I believe there's something over here as well delete over there that way we can completely make sure that there's no other sort of you can see that little mist of black that she saw I just use the, uh, the wand tool and just did that and you know just kind of like erased it right I'm gonna do the same thing over here though make sure we get pretty much all of it away and that's pretty easy to select right that's fine let's do the same thing with the color overlay on this one here 
make that black press ok and then let's just rasterize the layer type and there we go sweet so basically now we have this little thing over here now what i actually did to mine i'm gonna just make sure i'm gonna say ah, we'll just leave it like so i could have made it a little more bigger maybe but i want to really mess with the size too much because it's no longer rasterized that for me still looks pretty okay like right there I think that's about as good as we'll get it. And we're going to also make sure that that's rasterized like it is. Right? Let's also just do it again. Or you can just press Control u and lower the lightness down as well. There we go. Press OK. Now it's fully black and now we're ready to keep this thing going. So, now what we're going to do here is we're going to create this cool little sort of two-toned, not really color, but sort of match it in a way where, of course, when you originally selected your gradient map, you made sure it's a selected color where... And the picture that's using for the esports player or whoever you're using it for the organization make sure you just make like sort of match the color as best as you can so now i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drag in this second photo that i have here of scumpy let's go ahead and put it in um i believe the original picture itself was really taken perfectly i'm not gonna mess around too much with this that's good enough okay and now i'm gonna go ahead and do now is i'm gonna just make this a fair bit bigger but what's gonna happen is this little black little thing that we have behind that over there just clip mask it right into there and there we go now we're gonna have something like this now for me i'm gonna make sure i don't have who's that guy i forgot his name not puck i don't even know i don't i don't even i haven't watched in a little bit but whatever just make sure his face is not completely in there like eh, like right in. let's make it a little bigger then cool so now we got this really cool action photo like splatted on and it sort of looks like it's hitting like hiding under the banner design or even like I don't even know. I, I just feel like this little splat kind of like hides things or or reveals things. That's really cool. It's really a, a nice little fun way of adding a picture in. Um, that is a pretty perfect angle right there. I'm down with that. So now for me, I'm just gonna fine tune this little this little splat here. I'm gonna use a, a masking tool, the mask here. I'm gonna use a black brush. If you guys do not know already, black brush will erase it. A nice black hardness brush. And I want to get rid of these little splat things. Now to us, our eye is gonna be like you know hey like i just erased this it doesn't look quite right however only reason why you're saying that is because you see it yourself but when you actually you know far back and whatever it kind of just flows together so me erasing this with a hard brush is not too big of a problem however it's you're, you're probably gonna get tilted for a second and be like eh, it doesn't, you know, I, I see you erase that it's like you know but any original design i guarantee it even cross your mind um let's just say a little of this kind of stuff can go away we can say that this odd little splat here can go away or, I don't know, we'll leave that one. Let's just get rid of these then. And this is just sort of fine tuning what you already had before. If we got a backspace, there we go. Make a nice little, nice little perfect. So, mm, I don't want too much of this on the outsides. Like, all this stuff here. You don't want it to make it look sloppy and whatnot. You just want to make it to look like a nice little splat or sort of like a little, almost like a paint, like brush going through. Uh, let's just say now that that is pretty okay. It's now it's now it's a little more uniform and not so like you know crazy and sporadic, right? And I think that looks pretty dang good. Now, I believe what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just sort of separate this little left hand side here. For me, when I originally created this uh sort of banner design, I said to myself, there's something very odd about this little space over here, but I also want to make sure I keep this very cool simplistic look to the entire design, right? So for me, what I basically did was behind this photo here. With this little black little 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 thing here, I'm just gonna make sure I kind of name my layers a little bit. Let's call this black splat. Uh, we'll call this one right here. It's just another splat that we're gonna you know sort of just put there to leave it there. Um, this is for the lighting, and then this is the main picture in the background. Main background picture. All right, now we got a little bit better. Skump pick. There we go. Okay, okay. Now what we're gonna do now is we're just basically click, make a new layer right below that little splat, that black splat, right? And we're gonna go ahead and just sort of take our pen tool and let's just make a nice little sort of white just incredibly big white block now for some people it probably doesn't make too much sense but for me it made like perfect sense when i originally did this it just felt really good now i want to make sure it's not on a completely like sideways angle like that but just a little bit enough because it just looks cool <laughs> for me it just looks right put that nice little white there let's see does that look better perfect see for me it also also kind of like it feels like I was making another color scheme, or excuse me, following the color scheme of his jersey. Originally, in my mind, I was like, you know what? This kind of makes sense, right? You have this green, you have this white, and then over, all on this left-hand side is this black, and that's kind of what they use for their t-shirt, and it looks really freaking dope. I was really happy and excited for the fact that this, this really odd little white thing to the left just made complete sense, and I really do like it. So, 
what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna sort of mess around with this little splat for a second so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna choose a color and the way I did this was very very like it's not hard it's just me I'm choosing a color that sort of matches the background very simply just clicking with the eyedrop tool and I'm gonna say this blue match with this blue of course right press ok press ok again and this will play a big big part of what we're gonna do next and not really the splat itself but sort of the portion of selecting the color and for me it just looks way more organized now let me show you guys really quickly what, what would happen if I just use black right I put it on overlay this doesn't look like you tried for me it, it didn't look like I tried to make a really dope design so that's why all in all I left it on normal and I said let's choose a color and let's choose a color that kind of blends in with the background or the the, the gradient map that we had and it just looks really freaking dope right so now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that little uh, brush stock that I used and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did that now what I basically did was I used this little brush stock right here you can get it from selfby.com slash um I used it because where is it there was this one I used it because I just felt like this sort of made sense for the whole uh, I guess Call of Duty thing or like the whole it, for me it looked like a like a reticle right so, so I was like oh I have these little cool little reticles sort of HUD things I'm gonna use this one so what I did was click nice one time sort of in the center of this left hand right hand side excuse me what I did was I selected that color that I was talking about before again now this time I actually select no we're gonna actually select this little black um, or I wouldn't call it black I would call it like dark blue right maybe it's dark blue and what this did automatically was sort of create this really dope tone and this repeated color scheme and not just overlay it, it looked together and the way I did to enhance this I'm gonna make this uh, let's just make it green so that way you guys can fully remember and see it and just recognize what this is this is the, the stock so above this stock what I ended up doing was I made a new layer I clearly masked that new layer onto this stock I took my pen tool and just created a halfway point around it and then filled it in with a green that's gonna be this green I believe right yeah so something around this now at this very moment I was like yo this is really cool it feels like it disappears comes in disappears comes in and I have this really dope like feel to it but at the same time I was like I'm saying to myself why is this little I don't feel like this harsh line should be here so that's when I chose another stock of mine which is this one right here uh, blah, 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 blah. it was something this one right here so I took an eraser I just used an eraser sort of stock and what I did was I just literally clicked and just dragged around just enough so I can get rid of that sort of you know those those harsh lines and this also created a really dope atmosphere where it just it just looked right one of those just another one of those things so I did this one more time but more towards the top left side and we're gonna fill this in with that green just like so fills in with green and then simply take your eraser and then just get rid of that harsh line and I felt like that made the entire banner design look really really cool and you can do this with more stocks way more stuff and I also did add one more little thing that I did of course which is which was that like pattern this little pattern thing right so the way I did that was I basically just chose this little black splat made a duplicate of it when you do make a duplicate of it, the duplicate actually becomes the the new sort of host for this picture here and then you can take the original one move it out if you want to but what I basically did was I'm gonna move it up forward for you guys to see I lowered my fill all the way down to zero if you guys don't know what that does that really that completely gets rid of the picture itself with the opacity wise but when I double click on this and add in a what was it a stroke yeah I think it was a stroke right no it was I think it was drop shadow actually I believe I added a drop shadow size zero I forgot this part uh oh um no I, I got this I got this dudes all right so I added a nice little drop shadow and with this little drop shadow here what I ended up doing was I put like a nice sort of like a weird angle distance so I just get these little splats in these little outside areas over here I pressed ok right and now I can move this behind the actual thing again just like so press ok we're gonna rasterize this layer that way what's gonna happen here only these little things are gonna be showing now when I rasterize the layer themselves only thing that was I was being shown would actually be what's coming up right so what I'm gonna do now is little splats here they look really good right there that was that was perfectly fine for me but what I ended up doing was I just gonna make a duplicate really quick we're gonna leave this we'll just leave the original one as a duplicate take an eraser and then just erase a little bit to make a sort of scattery look to it a little more scatter to it right I just using this little stock eraser again right you can use whatever sort of eraser that would work to make it look very you know kind of scattered so what I'm gonna do now the last part was for this little portion was I took this right here I saw this and I was like you know I'm gonna repeat this going through the entire banner design so I'm gonna erase this stuff over here right because I don't need that I'm gonna take this little thing right here right I'm gonna hold alt and shift and then just drag it around a couple times just like that 
now this created these little three little strokes here i'm gonna basically combine them again i'll make this red so you guys can see it on that layer i'm gonna click on my eraser make sure i use a hard brush eraser that way i'm gonna get rid of this stuff completely may look really nice i'm gonna say to myself like that right there looks pretty good and what we're gonna do actually really quick before we continue this part we're just gonna go ahead and put, quickly put the uh, text in so that i can see where i want to erase completely like scump optic scump right let's make sure it's in the middle there we are maybe a little bit bigger right there we go and what we're gonna do is just quickly just change this hue make a nice little greenish hueish color there we can always mess around with that in a second and then on the bottom put captain of optic gaming i feel like i spelled that wrong i might have but i just feel like i did did i spell it no i think i'm good i think i'm good we're just gonna go with confidence confidence here okay so let's just put the text right there so now what i'm gonna do is go back to this black splat and I'm going to do now is I can actually say to myself, I want to erase here because that's where the text is. I want to make sure that's not in the way or sort of, you know, getting, you know, erased too much. Um, and I think that's perfectly fine. So when I saw this, this originally, even if you just change this color to one of those black, like those background colors like this, this right here itself looks so freaking dope. But however, I was like saying to myself, I don't want to make it too grungy. I want to give this sort of like a nice little pop to it. So what I actually did was I changed the color to not the, to the darker color, but sort of the, to the mainish green color, right? And what I did was I rasterized the color when I put the color overlay on. That way, what I'm going to do is we're just going to call this pattern. Because now we're going to change this layer to layer mo uh, layer style. I'm going to put a pattern overlay on. And I had this little pattern here. If you guys use a pattern uh, pattern pack that I have, almost like 30 plus of you guys actually bought that that day. And I really appreciate that. And all of you guys are like uh, tw uh, tweeting me like, yo, Sesu, this is freaking dope. So not to like lie or anything, but you guys really freaking killed it with the whole new release of the pattern pack. So... With that being said, I did use a pattern pack, and I just basically use this little cool little stock right here for the patterns, and it kind of like just brings lines sideways. Now you can use anything you want, like I have other ones over here, right, okay, boom, boom, right, and then basically what I had done was press OK, and then I said to myself, this is pretty much almost done, but I just needed one more thing. Now what that one more thing was, a nice little color balance sort of finish to it. So what I did was color balance, and now I didn't actually remember the settings I put before, but if I really wanted to, I can check. But what I'm going to do is I know I pretty much went to the Scion, right? To get him a little more blue going. I know I went more to the green because I wanted to keep that green. And I also went for the yellow to blue. I definitely put it to more blue. Now, pretty much here, you can see that this like sort of entire banner design sort of gets this really nice two-tone color. It looks really freaking dope. If you want to enhance a little more, you can just you know mess around with this a little bit more. And I think that's pretty freaking accurate to what I had before. Right, and also also covers over the picture here, and it just just makes it look completely right. So, I think we're pretty much done with the video, right? I pretty much did everything. I think I did it all. So, if you wanted to finish it out a little bit, maybe you can add some more lighting. I didn't do this in my original, but who knows? Maybe it looks okay. Let's just see what happens when I click like around where the name is a little bit more, right? Um, okay, I can see it working. All right, we're not gonna mess around with that because I like the outcome and I'm very glad that I actually get a pretty accurate, you know, version of what I had before for my original. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. A very, I, I try to make it as most, how do you say, informational or sort of understanding what my concept was while going through the actual design itself. So I hopefully that makes it more entertaining or whatnot. Just not, not me just clicking around and stuff like that, explaining a little more. So hope you guys did enjoy. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. As always, guys, thank you guys so very much. If you're not subscribed to me already, you can click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon if you guys are like, you know, returning viewers and you guys like, you don't know when I go upload or whatever. You know my upload schedule because my upload schedule is like either Friday or third, uh, Friday or Saturday usually every week. Um, so if you guys don't, you know, want to know automatically, just click that bell icon as always, guys. Also, don't forget to check my Selfie, selfie.com slash CISOHQ for any pre meds and packs as low as $3. And I also will put the pattern pack and the brush pack in the description down below. That way you have to look for it. So. Thank you guys so very much, and uh, yeah, talk to you guys later. Ciso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later.